What up everybody, Instructor Beats back again, talking today about what to do with my remainder. This is the division playlist video number three, so please check out the first two. But if you're just here with extra help for your remainders, check out our song about remainders and hopefully this will help you out. So our objective today will, today you will be able to know what to do with a remainder. So first of all, just a reminder of what a remainder is, right? So sometimes division is nice and neat, kind of like this room right here, right? Everything has a place, it's put away really nicely. And so you have 10 and you're dividing it into two. So I have my 10 right here and I want to divide this into two groups, right? Which if my divisor is how many groups I have, my quotient will tell me how many I have in each group. So I need to split my 10 into my two equal groups. So I split it evenly, right? I'll just do two at a time just to make this a little bit easier. Maybe fast forward right here. And so I see that 10 divided by two is five in each group, right? Which you probably knew, but we've divided it. It was nice and neat. Nothing was left over. And sometimes division is like that. And I like it when division is easy like that, but sometimes it can get messy, right? So sometimes just like your room can get messy, sometimes division can look a little bit like this. So you have 11 counters now, right? And again, you're gonna try to put them into two equal groups. And so you, right, take two at a time first, just to make it a little bit easier. And you're gonna split up and you're trying to find out how many is in each group. And then, uh-oh, you have one right here, but we know division is equal groups. So this just got a little bit messy. I have five in each group, but I have this leftover one that I can't put anywhere because if I put it here, then they won't be equal anymore. So we like to put it in what I call the remainder box. That's simply, you just draw a box over here, you label it as your remainders. So 11 divided by two, or 11 split into two groups, gave you five in each group, but then you had a remainder of one, right? And so you might know that, and it's actually not too bad when it's just a math problem like this, right? But what about when it's a word problem? There are four different ways to answer a division problem that has a remainder. So the first thing we're gonna do, go ahead and write these down in your notes and then we'll kind of talk about them as we go throughout the lesson. But the first thing is, if it's a word problem, the remainder could be the answer. The second thing is, you might be able to round the quotient up one. The third, you could ignore the remainder and the answer could just be your quotient. Or four, you could actually just write it, your answer as a mixed number. So go ahead and write those down and we'll take a look at what each of those means. So let's break it down. For every question that we're about to do, the, the math problem is 23 divided by five, which is four remainder three, right? So for this one, it says Miss Mayer has 23 pictures. She's putting into a photo album. She wants to put five on each page. How many will be on the last page. So right, if we drew a picture right here, we know that she's she has 23 pictures and she wants to put five on each page. So five here and five here and five here, right? And five here. So she has four pages completely filled, but then she wants to put all the pictures in there. So her last page, right, would just have her remainder of three. So for this problem, your answer is actually the remainder because the question's asking you how many would be on the last page and the answer would be three. So for this question, right, it says she has 23 pictures that she's putting in a photo album. She wants to put five on each page. So same exact word problem, except the question's different. It says how many pages will she need? Well, you still are putting five on each page, right? So five, which means you're gonna have four total pages that are filled completely. Um, and then you have that leftover three you have to put on the other page. So for this one, you're actually going to round this number up one. So it's not gonna be four, your answer is going to be five. She needs five pages because she has to put all her pictures on the, or all her pictures in the album. So you had to round your quotient up one and your answer would be five. If you look at this, this is the exact same question as this one, Ex I'm sorry, the exact same problem as this one, but the question is different. So the question's gonna tell you what to do with your remainder. This one says how many will be on the last page? Three, so you ignored your quotient and your remainder was your answer. For this one, you had to actually round your quotient up to five. And so let's take a look at another one now. 
So for this one, it's the same question. It says she has 23 pictures. She's put in a photo album. She wants to put five on each page. How many pages will be completely filled? So again, the same problem, but a different question for this problem. So you still have your five here, right? You still have your five here. You still have your five here. So you had four completely full pages, and then you had the three leftovers on the other page. But for this question, it says how many pages will be completely filled? And your answer, right, is these four right here. So for this one, you're actually going to ignore the remainder and your answer is just going to be the quotient. So there are a couple different ways to answer a word problem if there is a remainder, right? You can ignore the remainder and it's your and your quotient is your answer for this one like four. You could have you might have to round your quotient up, right? So for this picture it said or for this word problem, it said, how many pages will she need? So I had to take my four and round it up to five to fit everything. Or it could be that your remainder is your answer, such as in this question, how many will be on the last page? All of these are the same problem, but the question helped me determine what to do with my remainder. Go ahead and check this one out. Okay, try this one out. I want you to uh, write your statement and draw your blank division equation like you learned about in the division playlist video number two. And then Look at what you're, there is going to be a remainder and try to figure out what you're going to do with your remainder. So hopefully you just paused it and you check this out, right? And so my statement is going to say each cards, right? Questions ask me, so I'm looking for anything about cards, anything about friends. There are six friends that are sharing a game with 25 cards. Each friend gets the same number of cards. That's important because now I know I am dividing. How many did each friend get? So I'm going to draw my blank division equation like I learned about last lesson. And I'm going to think about, okay, what is my dividend? What is being shared here? Are my friends being shared by cards or are, they, are the cards being shared? Well, it says the friends are sharing a game with 25 cards. So the thing being shared is your 25 cards. And it's being shared by friends, so six friends. And 25 divided by six is four with a remainder of one. So this should say each friend got, right? Each friend gets four cards. And then there is a leftover of one card. So I actually like to label what my remainder is. There are four different things you can do with a remainder. You can ignore your remainder, your answer would be four. You could round up and your answer would be five. Your, an your remainder could be your answer, or you could write it as a mixed number, which would be four holes and one sixth. The four being my quotient, the numerator being my um, remainder, and my denominator is my divisor, whatever I divided by, right? So this is the same thing as saying 25 sixths. 25 divided by 6, just like we talked about last video. So let's look at our statement and try to pick which one we could we could get. So I know I divided 25 by divided by 6. My mixed number cannot be it because I can't, I'm not going to cut my cards up. So that doesn't make any sense. I know that each friend got at least four cards, which means I can't use my remainder. And I know for this, I can't round up because each friend got four and there's only one leftover card. If I'm saying five, that means each friend got five cards, which doesn't make sense because I don't have enough cards to go around for each of my friends. So for this one, I had to ignore it. And my answer is each friend got or each friend gets four cards. So thinking about logically what makes sense with your statement will help you know what to do with your remainder. Try this one. This one's a little bit different. Uh, go ahead and pause it. Write your statement. Draw your blank division equation and see if you can figure out what to do with your remainder and then we'll check it. So my statement is going to say, and so I haven't even read the word problem yet, but I'm using my statement to help me know that I need to look for anything about pepperoni. So a pizza store had 11 pieces of pepperoni that they were putting on their pizzas. If each pizza got two pieces, how many extra would they have? So I can, I know I'm dividing um, pepperonis and pizzas, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my blank division equation. And for this one, there really isn't any keywords. I don't see shared or separated or split. So we have to use some common sense here, okay? I'm not going to split pizzas onto pepperonis. That wouldn't make any sense, which means my pepperonis 
has to be or my dividend, right? That's an I. And so how many pepperonis did I had have? I had 11. And then what are they being split into or on? Pizzas, which makes sense. And then if this is my groups or my pizzas, my quotient should say each pizza, which my statement's asking me. Um, actually, doesn't tell me right there. If I'm looking for each pizza, but that makes sense based on what I know about my divisor and my quotient. And so my number for my pizzas is two. When I divide that, I get five on each pizza with a remainder of one pepperoni. A shortcut to help you figure out your um, remainder of what to label it, your remainder will always be the same thing as your dividend because once you get done splitting it up, if you have any leftover, it will be the same thing. So if this is pepperonis, then the rest of it also has to be pepperonis. So I want to think about what would make sense here. So I know if I have a word problem and there's a remainder, there are four different things I can do. I could ignore my remainder. It could just be my quotient. I could round up one to six, right? I could, it could be my remainder of remainder one pepperonis, or it could be a mixed number, right? Each pizza got five pepperonis and then they split the other one into one half. Again, my quotient being my whole number, my remainder being my numerator, and my divisor being my dividend. So let's look at our statement and see what makes sense. It's asking us how many extra pieces of pepperoni there are. So I know there are not five extra, there are not six extra, there are one left over. Um, and I know for this one, it can't be this because it's not asking me for how many did each pizza exactly get. It's asking me for the extra pieces. So for this one, it has to be my remainder. So they will have one extra piece, not plural, of pepperoni, right? And so that's pretty easy, right? This one, again, letting my statement help me guide what my thinking and which of these would be the best answer for this particular problem. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate you taking your time to watch this um, in our division playlist. Please, As always, please check us out and subscribe at Instructed Beats Official on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. Um, please check out our division remainder song. is a song that was written to help you remember the four different things you can do with remainder. As always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at instructedbeats at gmail.com. Instruct the beats out.